What's going on today, everybody? So we're gonna take the Subi out for a drive, a little bit of a drive today. I've only got a couple more miles until this uh, first, second first oil change? The first break in oil change, that's what we'll say. The first break in oil change. So we're gonna go get the clock over to the first 500 on the engine and hopefully get ready to do another oil change. So what I'm actually using is AMS oil um, break in recommended to me by the AMS oil people and then the filter um, is supposed to be a 12 but always get the 20. The 20 has the better bigger um, capacity you can cool down a little bit better might as well might as well get a bigger one so I've got uh, five quarts of breaking oil and a filter and about 30 miles to go until I need to do an oil change. The one thing that sucks though is it's the middle of winter right now. Ish. For some reason it's snowing in February around here, which is strange. It never snows. So it's down about 30 degrees, which is really rough on um, break-in oil because it's cold outside. And I have to store the car outside because we got another project going on in the garage. So... This is made to be in more warmer weather. Um, the SAE 30 is for when it's at uh, 100 C. So it doesn't really have a cold weather. So it's gonna be a little bit harder on the engine, but it will work. We, I'll let it warm up for a little bit. And this is what I do on every, when it's cold, it's been cold like this. Cause I'd rather have the engine running right now than sitting. So sit there, let it warm up until it makes it about a third of the way up um, to the hot mark. And then we'll start slowly putting around and driving. Here it is, this is my 2011 Subaru WRX STI. It's Obsidian Black. It has a giant crack in the front windshield. I just recently finished rebuilding the engine completely all the way, heads, uh, top end, bottom end, everything. Manly pistons, manly connecting rods, king bearings, new clutch, new heads, GSC valves, uh, new valve guides, uh, you name it, it's been done. One of the things that I did with this was the secondary air pump delete. What that basically is is just emissions only. It's a giant system that's sitting in the engine bay that doesn't need to be in there really. I mean, it's only for emissions and it's only during uh, hot starts for a couple minutes where it will actually pump air into the exhaust to give it a higher ratio of air to fuel or air to exhaust, I guess. I don't need it, I shouldn't need it, um, but one of the things that it does is it will actually cause a check engine light to come on. Now I've got the Cobb access tuner and I'm allowed to look at the diagnostic codes and clear them if I need to. Super helpful. It's not a huge deal to run around with it on. It just says that it's not working. So did that and uh, we're actually getting up to temperature now. So let's go on a drive and we'll just talk a little bit. We're a little bit closer to my 500 mark than I thought. So we got 20 miles to go. Let's get to it. Let's talk about the build, baby. Let's talk about the steam and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that we see. So this might be a little bit of an interesting video, uh, blog, whatever you want to call it, because A, trying to drive, B, 
trying to drive a stick and see this is the first time I'm trying to video myself while driving. Might be a little interesting. But what I wanted to talk about is I guess the build process. Should you? Should you not? Um, is it for you? Would, uh, would you be the type of person that would go and tear apart your engine? Tear apart I mean any part of your car because for me I was extremely extremely nervous scared insert emotion here uh, anxious about it I had no clue what to, I was getting into but I knew how to turn a wrench and that's and I know how to read <laughs> and that's half the battle is just being able to find a service manual to reference all the stuff that you need to um, find and because somebody has built it and with cars nowadays it's all written down it doesn't matter really what it is you can find a spec on it somewhere for your year your car whatever what have you um so would i recommend building your car to someone else it depends on your level of, of expertise how well do you know a car how well can you um figure out problems because that's what a lot of it comes down to some of it is that yeah you have to kind of know some things it takes a couple special tools but nothing special a torque wrench is your main thing feeler gauges if you're doing your clearance in anything but if you're just replacing parts torque wrench some assembly lube and uh, a little bit of know-how and I mean, that, that's all that it really was. I didn't have any specialty tools, really. I guess the valve um, spring compressor is kind of a specialty tool, but it was 50 bucks. Worth it to me. I might do another one down the road. Maybe not a Subaru. Maybe this engine. Who knows? I'll let you know when, uh, when we go to dyno it if it's good or not, but I mean, it's doable. It all is. You just have to have the right mindset. You have to be able to work your way through problems and have the time is another big thing. Would I recommend it? Yeah, go for it. Just know what you're getting into. Know that it's it's going to take time. It's going to take money. It's a pretty big investment to put um, towards something. But, I mean, you learn. It might be worth getting a wrecker um, motor and working on that. Maybe you start on something cheap that you have laying around. I know not a lot of people have a lot of engines laying around, but when I was growing up, that's what I, I had. I had stuff laying around that I tinkered with. We got cars running in the backyard when I was six, seven, right, driving around cars on our property. So it uh, takes a little bit of specialty, but not much. As far as building the engine, this, the Subaru's engine is basically stock. Um, they don't make an 8.2 compression ratio piston. Uh, they do, but it's not really, it's harder to find them. So I went with an 8.5 Manly. That's the only thing that's really different. Stock stroke, stock clearances on pretty much everything. stock heads but it's all upgraded stock so it's OEM plus is what uh, people were calling it but I, I, I like the extra insurance I went with the manly I beams I like the extra insurance that it's going to perform down the road it will hold power no matter if I leave it at this maybe I'll just leave it at stage two and be completely happy with it doubt it but who knows? I might be happy with it down the road. I might have it tuned and just be comfortable with it for a while. You don't know until you get there. Um, I do want to maximize this tune as much as I can because you pay to get a tune. And you can throw a couple of add-on parts that you need to have tuned um, on there. And that way you get you don't have to go back each time you put on a mod and get it retuned. So I might do a couple other little things, but 
I mean, not much right now. Everybody wants to do a big turbo, front mount intercooler, and I'm more about having the reliability there. I, I missed driving this car thoroughly. I thoroughly, thoroughly missed driving this car. And that's one of the things that I'm not gonna take for granted again, is just being able to turn the key and drive. With forged pistons, I have to wait for it to warm up and kind of let it baby it a little more, if you will. Um, but it's still drivable. I can still drive it. I just have to wait a little bit. No big deal. Um, it's very hard with this uh, break-in period to not boost or to not go fast or to not take the freeway. That's really hard for where I live. I live where it takes you a half an hour to get to anything, pretty much. Um, you can go down to the corner store, but if you want to go grocery shopping, it's 20 minutes down the road. If you want to go buy a new shirt, 20 minutes down the road. So, and it's freeway. It's kind of annoying taking the back roads everywhere, but um, I'd rather break this engine in right and have it work. <laughs> I already found one metal shaving in it that I'm not stoked about, but it is what it is. There's no real fixing it now. So with breaking this engine in, it's very, very tough um, not to get on it. That's the biggest thing I'm having a problem with. It's not so bad once you get up to speed, but every time I've driven this car, it's usually pretty hard it's a sports car I mean of course you want to drive it a little hard um, and I miss that I miss that a lot that's good pops um, but that is the hardest thing for me to deal with is um, not getting on it as hard as I want to I would love to just go out and mash the car and uh, hit boost and it would be great but reality is is I can't and this currently isn't my daily driver so it makes it even harder because I only get a couple 50 60 miles on the weekend and I could take road trips but I've got other obligations that I got to deal with so it is what it is um, I'm following the IAG uh, break-in procedure for their engines what that is is 50 miles of conventional oil first startup just take it out do 50 miles and uh, change that oil out that way you're not wasting a whole bunch of money on breaking oil and uh, nice oil filters or what have you and that way it'll clean out a lot of the shavings because it's gonna have shavings in it so 50 miles conventional oil whatever I did 540 Valvoline because it was on sale. Um, did the oil change. First break in 500 miles. And I'm getting really close. I'm currently 491.1. So really close to doing the first oil change. After that, uh, it says to do 1500 and then another 1500. But AMS Oil recommends only 1000 miles on the, their oil. So I'll probably do two maybe three um, break-in uh, oil changes. So um, that, uh, three 1,000 intervals for break-ins. Um, it, uh, it'll depend on what that last one looks like. If I need to go to a third one or stay at two, uh, I'll probably go with three to be on the safe side because this, this is an investment. I want to keep it as, as nice as I can and have everything work. So... We'll probably do that. Um, and then after that, we can go down and get it tuned. Now, luckily for me, I live pretty close to Wilsonville, Oregon. That's where Cobb Surge Line is located at. There's just a lone cow sitting out there. That's where Cobb Surge Line is located at, and I probably will go down there. I, there's actually a couple decent tuners that are in my area. I've got English Tuning Systems, uh, PSI, Portland Speed Industries, Cobb, 
Uh, and I think there's one more pretty close. Nameless is right down the street. They do a bunch of um, uh, John uh, John Deere, I think, does his uh, remote tuning. So they don't have um, an on-site person, but they're a wealth of knowledge for me to go just check in with Jason down there. Super, super cool dude. Met him a while ago and uh, stop in every now and then and say hey. Anyways, so there's a bunch of different options. I'll probably go with Cobb since I have their access poor and I support their local stuff. They're probably the second furthest away. So they're pretty far, but it's only like an hour drive. 45 minutes with no traffic. I miss curvy roads. And I miss driving with all the friends. That was fun. Um, what else? What else? Oh, with this break-in, so you don't want to be using the uh, gas very much. You want to, that's why they limit you on your RPM. So I'm limited to 4,000 RPM. And you don't want to go over a four pounds of boost. The whole purpose behind that is so you don't get gasoline all soaking through the cylinder walls. Because gasoline will actually cause um, it to not wear in. The rings won't wear in right and it will just cause you problems down the road. So that's why you're limited to only doing three, four thousand RPM and four pounds of boost. Another thing that's really, really good on your engine for braking in an engine is to um, use a lot of engine braking. So you use the engine to brake instead of your, of your brakes. So every time you come to a stop, this is why they want you to use back roads too, is you come to a stop or you slow down, you, they want you to use the engine to slow you down. That way you're using the least amount of fuel that you can. And it's giving you uh, a little bit better wear in. That's right. So with the engine braking, they definitely want you to use that engine brake to wear in better. But another thing is, is you want to use the back roads for separate or different gears, different ratios, different load levels, different um, gears will give you different characteristics. They want to, you want to throw as much random uh, at the car as you can, or at the motor as you can. That way, it'll be ready for everything. It's not just on the freeway doing 3,000 RPMs and six gear the whole time. That's why they want you to do back roads. It's because everything will be different. You'll be going up a hill, you'll be going down a hill, you'll be going in fourth gear, you'll be going in second gear, you'll be going in first gear, and it all will help break in your engine that much better. Back roads are always the obvious uh, choice. Sometimes, though, it's you, you can't get around it. I live, like I was saying earlier, I live 20 minutes away from things. And if I want to go, if I got to go pick up dinner or go shopping or do anything, then I got to, unfortunately, I have to drive on the freeway a little bit. That's one thing that sucks about where I live, but I also have a lot of back roads to kind of get places. <clears throat> but sometimes you don't have that option of being able to take the back road. And one thing that, a couple things that I do um, is actually when I'm getting on the freeway, it's <laughs> extremely, extremely hard. But just take it slow. There'll be cars getting behind you and people will be all pissed off at you. You got a fast car, why aren't you going faster? It is what it is. That part's really hard. But if you watch your boost, if you have either an access port or a boost gauge, watch your boost and just make sure you're not over boosting, but you can get up there where you have one or two pounds and get past three, three and a half thousand RPM and it'll be fine. It takes a while to get um, going that fast, but you'll get up going there. And another thing is once you're actually on the freeway, <clears throat> stick in the slow lane, stay doing the speed limit. Mine's 70 around here. 
stay doing the speed limit, um, and vary your speeds. So what I'll do is I'll slow down 10, and then slowly speed up past 10, and then uh, slow back down, speed up, slow down, switch gears if I need to. And that way it'll still give me a good randomization of, of uh, the, the back road acting like a back road when you only have the freeway. So it is um, a little bit tougher, but I mean, I don't see why it can't be done. I'm not an expert. I don't say, yeah, just go drive a thousand miles on the freeway right now and that'll fix it or that'll make it perfect. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that you can I don't see any reason why you can't do a mixture of both. Some people don't have the luxury of having back roads. Some people have to have uh, all freeway, which is rough, but get on and off exits. If you've been running a while um, and you're wanting to change something up, get off the exit real quick. And then you just go through, get back on the exit. I've done that a couple times, and that gives you a good gets you through a couple gears, allows you to use the engine to brake, and gets you, um, as long as you're actively thinking about it, that's one of the biggest things. You gotta remember, you can't just do 70 or just do the speed limit only. You have to actually think about what you're doing and how you're gonna get there, but it's the, the old uh, pay to play. You gotta pay to play. It's just one of those things. It is doable, I do it. I, I mean, I'll let you know when I get the tune if it's actually right or wrong, but I don't see why you can't just vary the, your speed on the freeway. Go up and down a little bit, it change gears, kind of get you higher in your revs. You only have your fifth and sixth, well, fifth and sixth for me, fifth and fourth maybe for you, but I mean, it is, it kind of is what it is. If you got to work with what you got, right? Well, I want to, I guess, thank you guys all for, if you made it this far in the video, please give me a thumbs up, a like. Sorry I was kind of rambling, but I wanted to go and get this um, ready for an oil change. I just now turned over 500, so we'll head back. We'll hopefully keep this warm and then be able to do the oil change in it. I don't know if you want to see the oil change or not, but I'll probably do a little thing on it. Um, sorry again for just rambling on. I wanted to, I guess, get some thoughts out there and let you know my experiences with it. If if you should or shouldn't build, I, I don't see why not. If you feel comfortable in it, even if you don't feel comfortable, if you can do a couple little mods, it's not a huge deal. Sometimes though, it is better to let the professionals do it because their stuff comes with warranties. Their stuff comes with guarantees on things. This car's acting crazy. Um, their stuff comes with guarantees and warranties and if something goes wrong, then it's not on you to fix. Prime example is my rear main seal. I had thought I had that dialed in started puking oil all over the place so I quickly learned that that wasn't the case with I mean it's all on you to fix it that's one thing one downside that um, I see with it but <laughs> for me I'm gonna fix it no matter what I mean I guess if if it's under warranty and IAG would would go through and fix it for me that's fine but I would be out an engine for another three months, whatever it is, their turnaround time to fix it for me. I've been wanting to drive it too much to to want to ship an engine back to someone. Okay, I'm done rambling now. Uh, thank you guys again. Hit that like button. Uh, I've got an Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, modding underscore addiction. Uh, I got a Twitter, hardly on it, but you can follow that too. That'd be killer. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna enjoy driving this on the ride home and finish out my trip. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Take it easy. Peace. God, this camera's all over the place. 
sorry. <laughs> I get stiff for suspension, they said. It would be fun, they said. I love how you get something in your mind and then you go to record and it's gone. Just gone like that. Magic. I can't remember what I was going to say. I can't believe it. I need to go left. I'm lost. Staring at the camera has not helped me get home. I guess we'll try right.